The, the initial pass at the at the design was calling for a high density uh, concrete block on the walls, and you can see it's kind of tough to tell. I'll zoom in here. The um, the ceiling of this vault was made of W12 by 53s, uh, 88 of them, sistered next to one another, fully welded at the at the flanges, um, and then we would stack lead bricks. 14 inches thick on top of that ceiling. Now it's a it's a 28 foot span, and we're, like I said, we were two stories below grade. So the only way to get the steel down there would have been uh, to either take an elevator out of service and you know pass lengths of uh, steel down the elevator shaft, or to bring them down the elevator in 12 foot sections. So each one of those beams would have had to have been fully penetration spliced down in the space twice uh, that led to a massive uh bust in the budget it was around 30 percent over budget just because of all of the labor and uh, involved with getting the materials down to the site each one of these beams would have had to have gone into place one at a time stacked with lead brick and then the next beam put on welded and then stacked the brick again so it would have been a really slow process uh, we expected it to also delay the schedule by about uh, four months, just based on how uh, productive we would be doing this plan. Yeah, I so, mean, to think about welding, you know, splicing beams together and full pen welding them to basically cut a beam up and then weld it back together in the lengthwise, that, uh, the, the labor involved with that would be- uh, is, a, is a lot of waste. And then so, I think ju yeah. just for people that are trying to visualize this, even if you're looking at the drawing, because the drawing may or may not kind of show this, but essentially you were talking about all the bottom flanges of the beam essentially would have made a solid ceiling. Correct. But because they would have all butt against each other almost. Yes. And you would have had a solid. Like a slab steel. of steel, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. With so bricks on top of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lead bricks. And the, the lead, the lead was similar in weight. I think uh, it was around eight hundred thousand pounds worth of lead. Hmm. So we had our we had a, a typical value engineering meeting where we put a you know a, a matrix together of everything we could do to make this a little less expensive. And we brought in the guys from Nelco who are um, say experts in the shielding uh, realm, and. Like, yeah. So Nelco is a local company here in Massachusetts, but they work all over the world. They're just, yeah. you know, if you're doing MRIs or you need like lead shielding, that type of stuff, um, they're kind of one of the go-to companies. They're really a, a specialty subcontractor in that space. I think they actually do some general contracting as well, which I, I didn't know before, but I kind of learned. So we had a we had like a typical value engineering meeting where we had a matrix together with everything that we could do to skinny up the cost of this project. And uh, we were around three million dollars over budget and we were looking to to cut that number. So we came up with a the set of value engineering actions we could take was only going to get us around four or five hundred thousand dollars worth of savings. So we got to the end of the, the meeting that we had with uh, all the project stakeholders, the architects, engineers and owners and the end users and they asked if anybody had uh, any other ideas and i sort of lamented the fact that we couldn't do this out of cast in place there was a ra the ratio of lead to this high density block uh, in terms of its shielding uh, properties is about three inches to one so for every inch of lead they had on the ceiling we needed three inches of a con of a concrete block and it just so happens that that dimension is the, exactly 28 inches, which is the bottom of this I beam to the top of the slab on deck above. So my initial, the initial idea was, let's remove the building structure, place a cast in place vault with the uh, top of the vault replacing the existing interior slab. You could put carpet down on it. Nobody would, would be the wiser. Um, and uh, the owner's project manager said, that's a great idea. Let's look into that. So it turns out there were too many people, um, too many people to be relocated 
and there was an office space above us and they didn't have the swing space to be able to, to relocate them for a period of time we needed. So we sort of started to peel back the onion and what we wound up with was um, a cast in place vault cast right to the underside of the slab above us. It did make for our uh, a smaller overhead clearance in the room, but we were able to mitigate that with some mechanical coordination. So this is what our first sort of uh, proof of concept sketch looked like. And what you see here, we just drew over the, um, drew over the steel with an interior uh, cast in place concrete lid. Yep. And we were able to send this out to uh, an independent structural engineer just to confirm that this would all work structurally. Cause we were, we're actually gonna lock in some of the, cast in some of the beams that support the slab above. And if we are, um, if we are keeping this in the audio for people that are looking at, you know, we're looking at a section through the room and essentially you had the existing ceiling that was the floor of the floor above. And now there's just basically a giant concrete ceiling, but it looks more like a beam because it's showing that it's two foot six to two foot 10 thick. Um, on the underside of the floor above, but it looks like it's not touching. Correct. We left, we were leaving ourselves at this point, we, we were leaving ourselves three inches um, just to be able, because we were going to have to core through this interior mats, uh, interior slab. Uh, we had to core eight inch cores uh, every five feet just to be able to place this. And we weren't being, we, that gap in between was really going to be out of our control. So we just had to leave a little bit of an allowance there. Um, so this was the final plan that we ended up with. We, um, we were able to embed some lead bricks in the underside of the, um, what they call the primary beam where the, the radiation levels are highest. And that helped us to shrink the, uh, the overall depth of this ceiling. But it, for the, the majority of it ends up being two foot six thick at 240 pounds a cubic foot. Wow. So we had we had Gary Miller from Nelco with us and uh, he was kind enough to share the sort of proprietary mix design that they use on their modular blocks. And we use that, this is where things really, the, you talked about construction junkies, this is like a concrete junkie uh, endeavor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so now we had to set out and, and create a mix that would be uh, strong enough because this is a very heavy, you know, heavy structure. It had to be strong enough to support itself. It had to be dense enough to serve as a radiation shield. It had to be workable enough that we could actually pump it into place. And um, all those things are sort of in conflict with one another. So it, it, one of the hardest parts of the project was actually getting, uh, or it had to be non-ferrous as well because it couldn't it couldn't interfere with the magnetic imaging. Hmm. So uh, Boston Sand and Gravel, uh, I may have worn their patience thin with the amount of uh, mixed designs we put together, and we actually did performance test mockups where we created a similar environment uh, where they'd have to pour this thing sort of blind and make sure that we could get the concrete to, to flow evenly across the top while using only two, five, uh, two cores, five feet apart. Mm -hmm. And we'd, we'd peel back the, the, the slab that we made out of plywood and see what kind of variation we had in the, uh, the top of the concrete mm -hmm. to see if we could make sure we could pour within three inches from the underside of the deck. So we, we did like a proof of concept placement, um, we struggled a little bit with the iron content. Mm. Um, we had to find a couple of iron ores that were non-ferrous, so that had a an iron content below thirteen percent. Um, hey, so just sourced. Yep. Can I, can I pause you just for a second, sure. um, just in case? So people that didn't listen to Josh, um, I'm going to give a brief overview just to make sure that we're not kind of talking and making some assumptions. Um, and some of this is going to be a repeat of what you just said, but just to help people grasp this. So you had this original room, it had an MRI linear accelerator scheduled to go inside of it. There was this extensive 
steel lead ceiling that was going to be built that put the project three million over your idea is okay let's essentially hang a ceiling form it from below and and pour from above by coring through two floors above running the concrete down um with a slick line or a standpipe down and then through those holes pour this concrete roof Correct. or slash ceiling over the mri and that detail that you're getting into is like okay now how do we create a mix of concrete that both flows enough to be evenly distributed and when you vibrate it make sure you don't have pockets or anything in there because pockets would have been a disaster right if you had air pockets yeah you were also dealing with trying to get um through the rebar right did you ever how much pretty intensive rebar i do have i yes the the bar was i think number 10 six inches on center okay so you have an inch and a pretty heavy cage diameter so now you're trying to make it thin enough to get through the bar, but have enough. And now now take it from there, because uh, this is where your knowledge kicks in. Like, Yeah, they, I'd say that there were four main things. We had to have strength. We had to have workability. We had to have density, which is the shielding. And we had to have uh, it non-ferrous. So we had those four things that we were really dealing with. Hmm. Um, there's certain certain aggregates so basically instead of using like a granite three quarter inch granite aggregate we were using iron ore mineral hmm. because as it's the not- course as the course aggregate in our concrete and now is that for both reasons because it's non-ferrous and it gives you the shielding you need the the iron ore gives us the shielding and we had to use uh two in particular uh, i think beneficiated ilmenite and speculated hematite uh i'm not a chemist but wow. i had never heard of those before um, one was our fine aggregate. The other was the coarse aggregate. Um, we had to play with the mixture in order to make the workability right. So we, we had a lot of different things that we had to consider just to design the, the concrete mixture. And, and we went through uh, we went through quite a few iterations of concrete mix design. Yeah. And that's what you were talking about. Like, there is zero chance for this not, there's no option for this not to work. So you had to actually test all these mixes simulate right. the condition yeah or it, uh, you can imagine what kind of problem would it, we would have had if you only get one shot at this if we had placed this lid and uh it didn't we didn't hit the weights you know because at that point we would have had we had some options but they would have been um painful ones in order to to supplement the density of the concrete if we had to add shielding it would have it would have been a pro, uh, you know another hurdle to, to overcome yeah so we really had to make sure we got it right. We we did the performance test. We let the concrete cure. We cored samples out of it. We sent them to a lab. They were tested for density to make sure that they they met the criteria of the shield. They were they were broken for compressive strength, uh, like you would normally do. But um, yeah, it was definitely an interesting process to go through. I don't think anyone's ever uh, no not to my knowledge gone through a concrete study that in depth. No, that's. That's wild. And what did the folks at Sand and Gravel, they were, <laughs> um, do they have like in-house kind of experts on this stuff or were you really relying on outside folks? Uh, we had a lot of help from, from uh, Nelco because they, they have experience with, you know, making these blocks. So we're, all we were basically doing was trying to take that same mixture and cast it in place. I'm just making a, a note about Gary Miller because I know Gary and I just want to make sure I tag them in this conversation. Yeah, I definitely do. He, he, we couldn't have done this without him. He was a, he was a huge help. Yeah. And I'm sure people are probably going to want to look up Nelco and kind of see what they, what they do. Yep. Um, all right. That's, yeah, that's fascinating. So, stuff. I'm, I'm also going to, uh, I'll let you keep going because I want to see the pictures. Um, but I'll also throw a link into the conversation with Josh because we talked about it there as well. Some people sure. might want to hear that. So you you touched on something already, but the uh, the concrete pump truck. I mean, we sort of leveraged uh, an M- every MRI has a quench vent. 
because it's a you know a container of helium under under high pressure. So if there's any issue with uh, the compressor helium liquid, it needs to off gas somewhere. Uh, otherwise, it's a dangerous situation. So we already had to build a a shaft with a um, to contain the quench vent, and it just happened to bring us up through the ambulance bay. So we had good access. We already had to build the shaft in order to do that work. So we uh, right now we're looking at a pump truck and yeah. So we pulled the, the grapple. I don't know what's going on with the size of all these. Oh man, what are these all different sizes? Um, so here's the. This is this isn't going to make for a great video. I apologize, but. This is the office. This is the office space above the um, above the vault, and you can see we protected everything. We did this over a weekend. They didn't even move the users out, um, other than the protection we put over the floor and over the cores. Uh, I don't even think they knew much about what was going on below. Mm. If if we if there are people listening to this, we're looking at you know basically kind of zip wall with a slick line and a core hole through the floor with through construction the workers with the hospital booties over their feet. <laughs> and then, so this is a picture from the dance floor that we had inside with our walls cast and the rebar in the uh, ceiling in place, which we actually had to sort of suspend uh, from the, the beam, from the structure above, right, while, so we were, while we were uh, tying all the bar together. And then when we put in the formwork, uh, we jacked the form into place to relieve all the uh, weight from the existing deck. Okay, so you hung all the rebar off the ceiling, but then pulled the, did you use like peri forms or something like that? Yep. And just almost pushed up on that rebar. Oh, there it is. Wow. So <laughs> it was kind of tough. It was very tough to move around. This looks sort of like one of those wired jungle gyms. Uh, but uh, there's a lot of weight involved here in this. This was what we needed in order. Yeah, this, for folks listening, it's just go to YouTube and watch this because <laughs> shoring on this formwork is uh, substantial. Unreal. It was very hard to walk around in here. Yeah, it looks like you could barely walk through the room, but you were having to climb through quite a bit of the cross bracing from the mm. from the stage. Uh, on account of the fact that it's a million pounds of concrete, though, I, at, I think that that was an overkill. <laughs> no. Not at all. So this is the um, this is the vault after we stripped all the formwork. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see the steel plate that was holding the lead over the uh, primary beam in place. We have some periforms, just uh, letting this cure up to uh, 28 days. Yeah. So now for people, especially because we have some younger folks, the more seasoned people are going to understand this. But um, so when you are talking about that form pushing up on the rebar is because if you had that rebar hanging off of the ceiling above and you put a million pounds of weight on that, there'd be so much weight on that upper floor. It would have been, it, you probably would have had some failure issues, right? Correct. Yeah. And now was it, were you at the, presumably you were at the bottom floor? Yes, we were the, our slab was on top of the buildings, um, four foot thick mat slab. Okay. So that million pounds transferred to the mat slab. Direct, directly to the, to the mat slab. Yeah. Piles or whatever. Okay. All right. Are these um, photos you, you could share or are they? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Oh, well, look at all the copper. So this is, this was another challenge too, just because, you know, you don't typically not have access to every side of your RF shield. So this would hit this, uh, it was a little trickier than usual, but we worked through the details there and how every you don't have access to every everything that you need. Uh, so we, the sequencing of the, the panel install and the penetrations of the quench vent ductwork um, those were important to uh, to coordinate. 